So far we have seen that involutes can be used as gear teeth profiles. But how can we manufacture these profiles? Traditional metal cutting processes would prove time consuming, expensive and error prone. Fortunately, there is a technique which is faster, cheaper and mathematically accurate. It uses an involute rack as a cutting tool. It forcefully engages with a gear blank, which is nothing but a metal disc on which we are trying to cut the gear, as if it is already a gear. The rack then removes any material obstructing its way, thereby leaving only what is needed, and that is our gear, freshly cut. Let us simulate that process here. Here is a gear blank or a metal disc, and this is the involute rack. We will be giving a step-by-step -step rotation to the gear blank and we will be giving a proportionate translational motion to the rack and whenever they overlap, we will be removing that area. So we start by first giving a rotation to the blank. So we select the blank about this center. We are going to move from here to here. Then we are going to copy the rack. So from here, we go one step ahead like this. And then finally, we are going to subtract from the blank the copy of the rack. And we'll be repeating this process over and over again. So we rotate the blank, advance the rack cutter and make a cut. Again, we rotate the blank, advance the cutter and cut it. Rotate the blank, advance the rack cutter and cut. Now you'll notice that a curve is already taking a shape. It is really surprising that a straight tool like this rack cutter is creating a perfect curved involute. Let us take a closer look at the freshly cut teeth. Uh, this may look a little rough and that is because we have been taking coarser cuts. But for a fine feed, this will be even smoother. Let's try that. Here is a somewhat simplified simulation of the process. So this is our gear blank and this is the rack cutter. And uh, instead of giving uh, one motion to uh, the blank and the other motion to the cutter, say rotation to the blank and translation to the cutter, we are going to give both the motions, rotation as well as translation to the rack cutter. So this is how it looks. The rack cutter is rotating as well as advancing and whatever is coming in its way, it is removing from the gear blank. So slowly you can notice the gear tooth taking shape. Once it's done, we can zoom in and take a closer look. So let's stop here and let's take a look at some of these teeth we have just cut. There they are. So they are much smoother because uh, this time we had given a finer feed. There are a couple of improvements we can do to this process by way of saving time and space. Uh, for example, instead of using a single rack cutter, which we were advancing every time before taking the cut, we can make several copies of this. So we can have an array of rack cutters and uh, each element of this array we can advance with an appropriate feed. So instead of using a single rack cutter, we will use this rather bank of rack cutters, each given a certain feed and they can all advance and take uh, their own cut. Uh, to save some space, we can take this array and wrap it around a cylindrical drum like this and then it becomes a continuous cutting process. This is then called as a gear hob and we will look at it in another video.